Ladies and gentlemen, today is Friday, October 23rd, 2015. My name is Jake Baldino. Let's talk about cool video game stuff that happened this week. Starting off with Hitman. Now this new Hitman I feel a little weird about. I feel like it's been very murky since the beginning. It, we couldn't tell if it was like free to play or not really. And now it got pushed back to 2016 release date. But just the other day, IO Interactive released a community-based developer doc video that kind of outlined what exactly they were planning for this game. It's really interesting and very weird, but in this new documentary, they kind of shed some light on what exactly they're going for with this. Creative director Christian Eveldam had a really interesting quote talking about exactly how they're approaching this that made me feel a lot better about it. Previously, it was like our dialogue was, we build a game, we ship a game, and then that's it. Now it's different. We will continue development, we will be listening, and we will do our best to listen to the people, figure out what makes them tick and what actually gets them into the game. That's the premise here, that it will evolve, that we don't know exactly where it's going to end. Iowa Directive was talking about how they're going for this, not as just shipping a product and putting out a game, but they're making a service. They're creating a Hitman service that will continue to support and provide people with stuff to play further down the line. And that's very interesting for a Hitman game. But I think they're realizing maybe story doesn't come first with Hitman. It's about doing the things, planning, having your open-ended missions, and they just want to keep giving us more of that. And you know what? That's really cool. They're just focusing on the game design here. They're not doing all the storyboarding and the development and the big budget things we're creating cutscenes and story. We're just getting raw game here, and I'm into that. And then it's some technology news that I found very interesting. There's this thing called Magic Leap, okay? It's basically kind of like a competitor to Microsoft's HoloLens. And by that, I mean it's like a virtual reality goggle that gives you augmented reality stuff in the real world. Very cool. But what makes this Magic Leap one very interesting is the fact that Google just invested like $500 million in it, which probably means that they want to go somewhere with it and do something and make it compete with the HoloLens eventually down the line. Now, that being said, I am less convinced about this stuff than I am even with VR. Augmented reality in your daily life is very much a weird thing. It didn't exactly take off with Google Glass, so I think this is very much up in the air. But for games, it's really exciting because I just love the idea, you know, the HoloLens demo that they initially showed where you throw a game on a table and you just play Minecraft with your hands. I think that's very exciting. And the fact that Google is investing like $500 million in that means they see something. Maybe they think something. Maybe they're going to be using that with Google Play. Time will tell. But honestly, I think they need to scale back with these things a little bit. I would love to see third-party manufacturers make something like this that kind of is an accessory to a game. You still play a game on a TV. You still enjoy it in the traditional sense but you wear glasses that maybe give you a heads-up display in the glasses that doesn't exactly clutter the screen. Is that a weird idea? I don't know. But it is something to think about. It is always really good to look towards the future of technology and see where it's going with gaming. And to lighten the mood a little bit, I haven't talked about Grand Theft Auto V in a while, the gift that keeps on giving, but we've got another really cool mod. We've seen the Hulkbuster Iron Man armor, but now we have the actual Hulk in the game. This mod is super awesome. Look at this. This is so cool. It's actually modded to you. You can pick up shit and throw it. This, uh, what? I just love everything about Grand Theft Auto mods. I linked it down below if you want to check out the rest of it, as well as everything else I talked about today. The Wall Street Journal apparently got some new scoops on Nintendo's NX. This is their new console that they've been working on that makes me feel, oh, well, I might as well throw my Wii U in the garbage because it's already dead in the water. They got a very interesting report out that is a good read and really highlights some new things that we might know about the Nintendo NX. Of course, they have sources that they cannot name, but some of those stuff seems pretty likely and believable. Wall Street Journal cited that people familiar with the matter said that they could introduce the NX as early as next year. And, I, and that does make sense. It seems like from when we initially heard the rumblings of it, it seems like it's been a fast track thing because they just want to right the wrongs of the Wii U and make up for that and clean up that mess. Wall Street Journal also thinks that Nintendo will likely include both a console and at least a mobile unit that could be used either in conjunction with the console or taken on the road for separate use. So that makes sense. I mean, it really seems like they're capitalizing on the idea of what the Wii U started as and seeing stuff like remote play on PlayStation 4 and running with it. What I think is very interesting and the thing I got most excited about in this report is that Nintendo is apparently using industry-leading chips in the NX hardware. I think in a lot of ways maybe they're trying to make up for the Wii U and its lack of power and how it just could not compete with the market at all today and you know it didn't really do so hot. So a Nintendo machine on top of its game with the latest console chip hardware you can have in it, good graphics, stuff like that. The fact that you can maybe take it and go mobile with it and probably some other quirks that Nintendo will invent you know that some people like to think are gimmicks will still make this NX thing really interesting and I'm really looking forward to it especially since they're talking about how it's going to be fast-tracked and they want to maybe get it out by 2016 or at least show it to make up for the softening sales of the 3DS and obviously the Wii U. And something we talk about on their show very much and something I really enjoy is corporations fucking up. Thanks to the eagle odd Wario64 on Twitter, he noted that there was an apparent price discrepancy and a glitch in the Target mobile app and someone actually bought a PS4 for $30. I did some digging and it seems like Target fixed it very, very quickly, but it looks like that, according to this image, it looks like at least one person got a PS4 for $30. $30. So congratulations, sir. You are very, very lucky and we all hate you. Side note though, at Wario64 on Twitter is a very good follow. He's he's invaluable to me because he just provides all this really
really cool stuff like this. He's quick on everything. You get the deals from him, and he always gives you scoops like that. So definitely follow him. And for those of you fans of FIFA or soccer or football or whatever out there, check out this really cool video that Complex Media produced that kind of goes into the detail and the development of FIFA 16. It's definitely worth watching. It's really cool because Complex produces awesome video content. And even if you're not into the FIFA games, it's a good look into video game development. Worth a watch. I linked it below. Check it out. And last but not least, of course, I saved the best for last. Let's talk about Fallout 4. First of all, it's gone gold and there are actual physical copies in the wild. Bethesda tweeted out this image this morning and I sat there drooling over it. We need it now. Fuck. And not to mention the fact that they released this limited edition Xbox One controller that of course I bought instantly when it went on sale in the Bethesda store because look how awesome it is. And for those of you that are looking at this image and say, what is that little toggle on a stick on the bottom right? It just has to do with headset controls. I probably shouldn't have gotten this controller just because I have to get my cat spayed. So don't tell my girlfriend that I bought this controller, please. <laughs> but every once in a while I highlight them, those really awesome special videos that are completely animated and detail the perk and special system in the game. Uh, there's a place where you can watch almost all of them and and I linked it below because it's worth watching because these animated shorts are so funny and so worth it. Bethesda also announced a partnership with Carlsberg to produce Fallout 4 themed beer. Yeah, I swear. It's totally real. They say it has a refreshing, zesty, hoppy taste and a floral aroma. And the bottle design is so slick. Look at that. You can pre-order a 12-pack on Amazon, but unfortunately, it looks like they're only selling this in the UK. But one thing I really appreciated, this is really cool. Check it out. It is from Reddit user Life's Not Perfect. And he posted some artwork on Reddit that had to do with his girlfriend saying that when Fallout 4 came out, it'll be like he's dead because she'll never see him. Check out this artwork because he literally interpreted that. And it's hilarious and it's beautiful. And it's relatable. Let's be real. And real quick before you guys go, the last winner of our Community Highlights series of videos was Joel Thornberry. Congratulations. You won a console. Nice fucking job. And side note, if you are a fan of Star Wars or anything, you can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash because video games. If you like reaction videos, I did a reaction for the new Star Wars trailer. I'm very excited. Sometimes I post game reviews over there. Check me out if you really think I'm not annoying. But that's it, guys. Those were the cool things I thought were worth talking about this week. But I really want to hear from you guys down in the comments. What do you think about all this stuff? Did you get a PlayStation 4 for $30? Did you get two? Can you sell me one? I'll give you 50 bucks for it. And let's talk about Fallout 4. What's your favorite special video? And how do you feel about this Magic Leap stuff? And, you know, compared with HoloLens, is this stuff that you're excited about compared to VR? Or do you think it's hot garbage? Let me know. And of course, a lot of you guys know the drill by now. If you click the like button, if you had a good time, you really helped me out. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jake Baldino if you ever want to talk about video games. But if you are new around here, subscribing is the best thing you can do because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.